Hi, I'm Will Raisin and welcome to Will's Way. For today's session, I'm here on the Middle Lake at Gold Valley and I want to go in depth and show you how I go about catching a lot of these F1s and the small carp. It's a type of fishing in the last few years I've done a lot of, but probably about 10 years ago, I definitely wasn't up to speed with it. And at the time I was going to places like Westwood, Tunnel Barn, and I just didn't compete and I was doing it slightly wrong. For me, in the south of England, I've always been brought up fishing for carp. When you're fishing for carp, you try to do it as far away from you as you can. They're big fish, they're wary fish, and they're easily spooked. So by fishing in the margins, you're always fishing 10, 12 metres, almost up to the next peg. And what I want to show you today is fishing for a number of fish at close quarters. And it's something I learnt, like I say, at places like Westwood and Tunnel Balm. To catch a lot of fish, obviously if you can do it close to yourself, you're going to be faster. But also you can feed much, much, you know, with a lot more regularity. If you're fishing with soft pellets or baits that can come off the hook, if you miss a bite and your bait comes off, you can rebait very quickly. All in all, by fishing close to yourself, and by that I mean a top three, top four, you can be a lot, lot more efficient and you can really, really up your catch rate. And when I started doing it, I was really surprised what a massive, massive difference it made. I remember watching Andy Bennett and anglers like that at Westwood and just wondering why they catch so many. And when I had a closer look, they do everything really, really close to themselves. Obviously, there's a few little things that play a big part. Um, things like net positioning is very, very important. Sometimes I even tie my nets back just to stop the fish swimming them out, but always make sure that there's plenty of water in the nets for the fish. Why fishing at close quarters? Like I say, I've already touched on that a little bit. I'm not fishing for 10 or 12 big wary carp for a hundred pound where I want to do that at distance. I'm fishing for a number of fish. The last match on this lake was one with over 200 pound, which was probably close to 100 fish. And if I can do it all close, I can be fast, I can be efficient, and I can catch those fish really, really quickly. As far as bait choices and that are concerned today, I'm going to be fishing with pellets. But again, on your venue, if you've got a venue close to you that's full of these F1s and carp, you know, fish up to about four pound. Use the bait that obviously works on that venue. As far as what side to fish, I'm going to plumb up very, very carefully. I'm a massive fan of, of, like I say, taking my time when plumbing up and avoiding any underwater obstacles like house bricks or boulders or anything that is going to put those fish off feeding really confidently. I'm going to look for that nice little flat bottom. It doesn't worry me if it's on a slope as long as it's flat and clean. There is a bit of a difference between flat you know, and a, 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 a clean bottom, but you really do need to plumb up carefully. Probably going to fish to my left. The wind today is, is from the west, so it's going to be coming from right to left. And just fishing downwind is always a good way, as long as the toe's not too strong this side. Fishing close to you also, a lot of people don't realise this, but it is an all year round method. On a lot of these smaller, more intimate lakes, canal lakes or, or small small commercials the fish will still be close to you even in the coldest months and it's a brilliant way to start another massive advantage of starting like this like i say all year round is you leave the rest of your peg totally untouched so if something you know you see an angler next to you or opposite you starting to do something you've got a blank peg you know a blank canvas almost to start with and you can go out into your peg and start your match the anglers that tend to feed left and right at 14 metres and at 6 metres and 5 metres and in the edge, they've committed. They can't take that bait out. And one thing I love, especially in the colder months at starting short, is like I say, it leaves me a blank canvas to work with and I can just go on into my peg as the match unfolds. But don't be mistaken, a lot of the time you start short and you almost finish short, especially on these venues where there's lots and lots of fish. Also, like I've said, you've got a blank canvas, the rest of your peg, and if you can catch those fish short, you quite often get a constant supply of fish coming in from that untouched water that is obviously past your pole tip. And that goes hand in hand with fishing short. And if you get that constant supply of fish coming in, 
you can quite often get bites on an off all day, no matter what time of year it is. I'm now going to show you the bait that I've bought for today's session and the rigs. Now I want to show you the gear that I've set up for today's session. Again, I'm going to be fishing that top four in front of me, just at the bottom of that shelf, nice and close. I can plumb up accurately and I can fish accurately. One little thing that I always say to people when you're trying to achieve utmost accuracy is just to imagine there's a three pint bait box on the bottom and you want to plumb up, feed and fish in this. It's a real good way of doing it and it can really sort of focus your accuracy on that little bit of your peg where you've plumbed up and the bottom's really nice. Fishing to the end of the section and a far bank marker and you can, by following these rules, you can achieve, like I say, unbelievable accuracy. The rigs I'm going to show you for today's session are all with the F1 speed kits. Again, nice short kits. They're around six foot long, five and a half, six foot long, and they enable me to fish very, very fast. Not only to put bait in my pot, but also to net fish very, very quickly. I'm going to start by showing you the float, and it's an inline carp diamond from Darwa. Fantastic bit of kit. Nice and strong, durable, which if any of you follow what I do, all of my gear is based around being strong, durable, reliable. I don't want to be starting to catch fish, getting that feeding going really, really regular, and I'm let down by my float. 4B14s, got a couple of back shot on there. Um, I've never really fished with back shots much up until the last year or so, but when the fish are right on your bait and the, you want to position your float dead on that bait. Always remember that bait box on the bottom, you're trying to feed fish and plumb up in that. Back shots can just hold my float right over that fed area and like I say, improve my accuracy. The main line is 016 Darwa Tournament Rig Line. Again, you'll see there, I've just got a little bulk. It's nice, simple fishing. I'm going to be lifting it, dropping at these, these bites. A little bulk of stots there and a four inch hook length of 013, 0128 Darwa Tournament fluorocarbon, and I've got a size 16 B911 on there, which is one of my favourite hooks for these. I either use those or the LWGs, like I say, but these are just that little bit stronger, and if there is an odd carp about or a lot of fish, it's not going to let me down. You can see that it's very tight at the bottom end. Again, I'm trying to achieve accuracy. If I miss a bite, just lift the float, drop it back in and quite often it will go and you'll catch that fish that you've almost just missed a bite off. Back up to the business end, you see I've already plumbed up here, body in the bristle over depth. Um, again, just remember that when people talk to you about dead depth, it's not just the bristle, it's the body and the bristle. Coming up, blue hydro, one of my number one, blue or white hydro, I've got two blues and two whites set up, is my number one for a lot of my fishing just like the way it works, it's soft, but it's also harsh enough if I want to start bullying them if I think I'm on a lot of fish. Got a small pot on the end of my pole. Again, I always use the pot, the size that I want to fill the pot. Never use a bigger pot and be half filling it or a third filling it because it's very easy when you start catching some fish to get carried away. The adrenaline starts going, you start filling it up and before you know it, you've overfed the swim. I've got two or three other little pots with me here. You see a couple there. If I want to feed less, I'll put a smaller pot on. I won't put less in a bigger pot because it's much, much harder to regulate. We're going to be feeding very, very regular today. And like I say, I just want that constant amount going in all the time, but the same amount. I don't want to be getting carried away and overfeeding my swim. As far as down the edge is concerned today, I've got an inline Darwa edge float there. Again, 4B14s, takes a nice bit of shot, strong, reliable, durable, all the same things that I look for. Couple of back shot, exactly the same, 016 tournament rig line. And again, the shot in is exactly the same, and the same hook length and hook. 16, B911, four inches of 0128 Darwa tournament fluorocarbon and a small bulk of stocks. Like I say, a bulk, again, I'm looking at just fishing, really accurately over that bait where I plumbed up and the bottom's nice and like I say just lifting and dropping at bites and trying to maximise my time in the water. 
White hydro on this. Again, I'm fishing down the edge. There's a few little roots and bits and bobs down there. Want something a little bit more powerful, although it is nice to play fish on. It's just that step up from the blue hydro. And again, you see, we've got another small pot on. Very, very small. I can just fill that up. And also, one thing I want to touch on, again, I keep repeating myself, I know, but it's vitally, vitally important, is accuracy. I'm looking to fish on that little spot, pot placement. Don't have your pot back here. Have it within an inch of your pole tip. And this, when you're fishing to the end of the section, far bank marker, pot placement is right on the end. You find it very, very hard to be anything other than very accurate. And that is what's going to catch you a lot more fish. I've spoke a little bit about plumbing up and it's vitally important that you find a nice clean area. A lot of these commercials that you go to, you know, it's just mud and you'll be able to fish in the depth and that, that you want. Here at Gold Valley, the banks and that, there's quite a few rocks and little bits and pieces. So you just need to plumb up carefully and just find that nice little area with little tiny intricate movements of the plummet. To do this properly, you do need a decent plummet. With that, I mean size, 20 to 30 grams. You see the plummet that I use, it's 20 grams nice and heavy and I'm going to get a proper register. I'm using quite heavy elastic and I don't want like a five or a 10 gram plummet that isn't going to register. I want to be able to feel around with a decent plummet and obviously pick the best place in my peg to fish. As far as baits concerned, here today I'm going to be using pellets. I'm going to be feeding micro pellets, fishing expanders. If I get problems with little fish, I might go onto a hard four mil. But when you're fishing at close quarters for a lot of these fish, use the bait that works on that particular lake, on that particular venue, whether it's meat, whether it's corn, maggots, casters, worms, pellets even. Like I say, just because I'm using pellets today, everything I'm showing you today will work with a multitude of baits. So you don't have to do it with pellets. I just use pellets here because I know it's what the fish love and I know I can catch a few fish on them. A lot of places, like I say, feeding micro pellets, fishing an expander, or a hard pellet on the hook is the way to go. But don't be afraid to use anything that I'm gonna show you today with, like I say, a multitude of different baits. As I've said, the method that we're using today will work in, a con in conjunction with many, many different baits. Today, however, I'm gonna be feeding micro pellets and fishing a soft four mil on the hook and expander. If I do get problems with little fish, I will change to a banded four mil. But what I want to show you is the correct way to prepare your feed pellets when you do decide to fish with pellets. It's vitally important that you prepare them the correct way because I tend to use my bait to control the fish. And by that, I mean I want my bait to be very heavy. I want them to absorb as much water as they can, and this will make them heavy. That means they come out the pot in one clump and all sink at the same rate. And when fish start feeding on the bottom, even in the edge, like I say, they're not gonna waft them up because they're very, very heavy. There's so many different ways that people say to prepare pellets, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I do them to, like I say, on these venues where there's lots and lots of fish, to help me control the fish. I don't want pellets wafting up. I don't want pellets all sinking at different rates. I want to put them in my pot, touch the water, tap my pole, and they all come out in a clump and sink fast and obviously at the same rate. These fish in these lakes, the F1s and the carp, they're stubborn fish. They'll be where they want to be. But by using a heavier bait, you can control them that little bit and just cut down on those foul hook fish and miss bites. So now I'm going to show you exactly how I go about preparing my micro pellets for venues like this. So now to prepare the pellets, and this is something you either want to do at home or as soon as you get to your peg, because it's the type of thing that just gets better. You know, at the end of the match, quite often, they're really, really good where they've soaked up all the water. What I tend to do is just do it before I leave the house. I use tap water, it's not a problem and give them the utmost time, like I say, as long as possible, to sort of mature and take on all the water. I'm going to put about half a bag in here, and this is where it differs to what a lot of people do. You can see the pellets in there now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this 
So there's about two mil of water above the pellets. Just give them a good stir. And you can see in there now, there's quite a bit of water. And what I'm gonna do with that two mil of water above them is just leave them. I'm not draining them off. I'm just gonna leave them. And what this will do is the pellets will soak up all that water. Like I say, with that water in them, they're gonna become heavier. They're gonna be more user friendly and help me control the fish. In true Blue Peter fashion, you can see these are the ones that I prepared this morning and they've soaked up all the water. I haven't drained any water off of these. They've soaked it all up and they're really heavy. You know, these are absolutely perfect for feeding. They're not falling apart. Try and pick the right pellets. You want a nice dark brown pellet, which means it's got plenty of oil in it and it's gonna take on the water. Those real light colored ones tend to just fall apart and go a bit like ground bait if you prepare them like this. But preparing your pellets the correct way when fishing like this, for me, is of utmost importance and you can really, really reap the benefits when you start fishing. So like I said, I've shown you the gear now, I've shown you the bait, I've spoke to talk you through exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna be fishing close, I'm gonna be looking for that nice area on the bottom to fish. Again, I'm gonna be feeding very regular. Feeding close not only makes me, you know, that everything about it for me is, is a plus. I can feed more regular. I can feed, like I say, much, much more accurately. I can fish with a shorter line, which means I'm gonna hit more bites. You know, I can see my float better. Everything about it is an absolute must. Just hope we catch some fish today. We should do, there's a few fish moving. And like I say, I think it's gonna be the ideal day today and the ideal venue for me to demonstrate to you just how deadly fishing very close to yourself can be. Right, so the first things first when you're fishing like this, because once we start feeding and I get a few fish in my peg, the last thing I wanna be doing is coming in all the time and rebaiting. So it's vitally important that you pick a good expander. Nice rubbery expanders that when you pump them, you can get them on the hook and always bury your hook. A bit like old style caster fishing, get your hook right in there. And what I'm gonna be able to do with this is lift and drop at bites and it's not gonna come off every single time. Again, when I'm starting a session, I'm always remembering that bait box little trick on the bottom. I'm shipping out to my far bank marker to the end of my section. I'm just gonna lay my rig in, tap those pellets in that have been soaked. They sink like an absolute stone and just lift my float so it comes over those pellets. And again, I'm not gonna be striking, I'm just gonna be lifting once we start getting some indications. There was a little bite then, straight away. Might get pestered with little fish a little bit to begin with. Once them F1s and that start making an appearance. And again, it's just about being controlled and like I say, I want to just, I don't want to be striking that bait off. I want to be lifting. There you go, there's a fish. Brilliant. Again, early in the session, when you're fishing these sort of venues where there's lots of fish, you need to start creating that regularity of feed. So what I'm not going to do is just pot some bait in. If I don't get a sign, sit and wait. I'm going to come in after a minute and a half, two minutes and feed again and start trying to get that regularity of bait going in. It's of utmost importance. Different in the winter, you're gonna to wanna to just sit and wait over a little bit of bait. But this time of year, you really do need to create that regularity of feeding. This is what's gonna draw them in. This is what's gonna get them in your swim. And a few little indications there now. And I'm just lifting like I say, and I can tell that pellet's still on. And it's such a good way of fishing. If you can get in the habit of just lifting at indications, you're not striking that bait off. There you go, there's a fish. Brilliant. That early on in the session. But again, 
I've fed three times. A lot of people just put some bait in, sit and wait for it to happen. And in the winter, yes, but this time of year, you've got to make it happen. You've got to create that regularity. It's easy when you're getting bites and there's fish in your peg because you feed after every fish. But to get them there, you've got to create that regularity. So don't be afraid, like I say. Give it that minute and a half if you don't get any indications. Nice F1. Fighting ever so hard at the moment. There you go. Nice. Brilliant. And a real good sign as well when you're fishing like this. You can see where that hook is. And like I say, I know I repeat myself, but just imagine you're fishing in that bait box. Those pellets hit the bottom nice and accurately right where you've plumbed up. You're positioning the float right smack bang on top with the accuracy of fishing to the end of the pole section, far bank marker, and there's only one thing going to happen. If you can incorporate a nice positive rig, regular feeding, you're going to catch a lot more fish. And you'll notice we're fishing close to ourselves, as you know, and look at the speed that you're achieving. Feeding, so quick after hooking a fish, putting it in the net, I'm back in already in a matter of seconds. I've fed again, rig's positioned, and the beauty is, and the reason I like fishing like this is I've got the rest of my peg left untouched that I can just move out to if I need to. Another little bite then. Really is just a case of just lifting that float out the water at an indication. I'm not striking hard. A few little fish about. There's a few roach and rud in this lake, which can be a bit of a pain sometimes, but once them F1s and that move into that regular fed feeding, quite often push them little tiny fish out. A few roach and that topping. Again, I'm just holding the float. There's a bite then. Could have been a little fish, but watch. With us fishing close to ourselves, the actual speed. I've not even took my number four off. I've baited up again. Fill that pot up. Just press them in a little bit. Because of the weight of them, they just come absolutely flooding out of that top out of that pot and you can see the reason that fishing close to yourself can be absolutely deadly on these venues the speed that you create another fish there it's all about speed and like I say it is a deadly thing and it's a mistake on these fish pack venues that a lot of people make. They just fish too far away from themselves. And it doesn't matter who you are, if you're fishing, the further you fish, the slower you're going to be with feeding, rig positioning and everything. Again, hooked. Won't open his mouth. Just use my discordry, just inside the top lip. And again, and this is something I picked up on, like I say, years ago, when I watched these top commercial anglers at F1 fishing and small fish. It's the speed that they're fishing at. And you can see now, literally, 30 seconds ago we were playing one, and now I'm fishing again. And this is what you need to do. Sometimes if you can catch them shallow, brilliant, you'll catch them very fast. But if it's about fishing on the bottom, there's no way. Another fish there then. Little fish, I think that, maybe a roach or... But again, it's the speed that you can create. I'm spending a lot, lot more time fishing
than shipping in and out, you know, putting a new pellet on or feeding or, and that is what it's all about. And I'm sure if you fish venues where there's a lot of fish and you incorporate this into your attack, you're gonna catch a lot, lot more. So like I say, as much as I wanna be fast and efficient, I also wanna make sure that things like my bait presentation, is absolutely spot on. And I'm concentrating all the, there's another fish there now. I'm concentrating all the time when I'm shipping out to the end of my section, in line with my far bank marker. And trust me, if you can increase your accuracy, which it's easy to do fishing close to yourself, you're gonna catch a lot, lot more fish. I see too many people, you know, their accuracy isn't that good. Pot placement or far bank markers or something slightly out, and they don't catch so many or they lose and foul look fish and miss bites but incorporating a lot of accuracy smacking the top lip again incorporating a lot of accuracy into your fishing I can't stress how important it is and and you know I've seen it when I do tuition days and watching matches and and everything else accuracy and fishing close to yourself you can see then you've literally just put one in the net and I've already fed the rigs positioned right on the spot and I'm ready to start that process of just lifting and dropping at indications a few little fish I saw a little fish swirl then a rud as I just dropped those pellets in Definitely a few indications now. There's another fish there now. And it's frightening, you know, like you've got a big lake and we're catching them literally on a top four. And the best thing about it is if it was a match now, I've got the whole of my peg still to work with. You know, if this were to die and, you know, there's a guy catching shallow opposite or, you know, on maggots or this that or everything else I've got a blank canvas to work with one little thing again and I like to talk about little things that come up as we go along you can see that there's only a tiny little bit of slime it's not like fishing for bream but you will still get a little bit of slime make sure always you clean every single bit of this off not only does it make your hook length and rig more visible but also it can affect the shotting of your float so again, just take your time, clean your rig off every single fish, making sure that that pellet's hooked on real nice and deep. Filling the pot to the max so I can regulate it very easily. Just swing your bolt just past, feed, and then just hold your float out the water and let it all swing in underneath your tip indication straight away again then and again perfect now I'd be thinking you know if this was a match it's such a nice position to be in because I've not put pressure on any of my peg I've just started short got off to a nice start and normally there's one or two things that would happen in a match one it would go quiet and you'd have to go out into your peg or down the edge. Or two, like I say, you just keep getting bites and you get that constant supply again. Hook lovely. This is a real good sign that everything's working right. Your accuracy, the accurate plumbing up, your rig placement and everything. Again, after every fish, just checking that rig, making sure that everything's nice and clean taking my time with hooking that pellet because when you're lifting and dropping like we are if your hook's not right in a real good purchase on that pellet after one or two lifts your pellet can just come off and I want to be fishing I don't want to be coming in all the time putting a fresh pellet on I want to be fishing and it's amazing you get that dink you lift nothing 
again dink lift nothing there you go now i've missed the bike first cast then but because i've hooked my pellet on nicely i can literally just lower my float back down with that positive bulk shotting pattern and there's a good chance that the bite i missed is this fish that i've got on now your rig is relocated really really fast And all of a sudden, you know, we're catching at a rate now where, you know, somebody's got to catch a lot of fish to, to compete with you or beat you. And also when you're fishing close, the one thing that really opened my eyes when I first started doing it is when you pull your nets out at the end, I couldn't believe what sort of weight I'd accumulated. And it really is a case of just because you're fishing, you're, you're, you're catching constantly. Another nice F1. Right in the top lip. And then, again, you can see there, no slime on the hook length, but there's a little bit of foliage or something above. Just while I'm here, again, I talk a lot about the strike and I just want to show you I use the term rig relocation a lot in my commercial fishing and basically what that is is if you can imagine that's the bottom and that's how we're fishing you get a bite and you lift and then you drop it back down you can see how quickly with that bulk and short hook length everything is relocated and that's what you do you feed some pellets they go nice and quickly to the bottom because they're heavy. The fish tune in on those, they go to it, and your hook bait's there, you get an indication, indication, and you just keep lifting until you hook that fish. And it's a very, very, very effective way of fishing. For those of you that haven't done it, it's not the easiest habit to get into. Even like non-anglers, if you said to them, what do you do when you get a bite? You strike. And this is just about lifting. And all I'm trying to do each time is just lift the length of my float out the water. And with good quality hooks, if that fish has got it in its mouth, you're going to set the hook even with just a lift. Using blue hydro here. Again, it's set slightly pingy, so again, if that fish has got it in its mouth like that one, absolutely perfect. And what I'm doing is, I'm maximising my time fishing. I'm not coming in rebaiting, I'm fishing all the time. And that is the most important thing. The people that look really fast and are thrashing it to a foam quite often don't catch what the sort of steady eddy anglers catch that are just fishing all the time. Lovely. Smack bang in the top lip again. You'll notice that I always comment quite a lot on a, where the fish is hooked. And again, it's something worth keeping an eye on because quite often if, if your depth's changed or, you know, your float's moved, I always mark my depth with a Tipex pen so I can just check it. But quite often, where you're hooking the fish will change. You'll start hooking them a little bit deeper, around the mouth, under the chin, things like that. And it's a real good sort of gauge that if you're not hooking them, plumbing that top lip, something's wrong. So if you do encounter problems, which you can do, no matter what you do, always just go back, check the depth, make sure everything's right, something hasn't moved, body in the bristle over depth. And quite often you'll find if you start hooking fish elsewhere other than that top lip, something's changed. But that lifting and dropping really, really does make a big big difference see I've, this cast i've had three times i've lifted and the bait's still on four times 
and it's relocating quick five times hooked a little fish then but my pellet's still on and this is why it's so effective fishing like this because I'm not I'm actually fishing I'm not in and out six bites pellet's still on seven bites on the seventh bite I've hooked that fish and that is the most important thing. If on that first bite, you strike that pellet off, the whole sequence is thrown out because you have to come in, bait up again, feed again, and the whole sequence is thrown out. And it's vitally, vitally important that that pellet stays on. And it's not just what pellet you use or how you hook the pellet, it's that strike. And believe me, if you go out next time you go practicing or pleasure fishing just try it because if you can get in the habit of lifting and not striking and incorporating accuracy into this you're going to catch a lot of fish one little tip because like i say i do go out with a few people and trying to help them top lip again i'm going to give you another little tip now Again, just go through the routine, just checking everything's clean. I'm going to go through, I'm going to give you another little tip now, which will help you when you're trying not to strike. Again, just following the same routine. And that tip is, let me just feed. When I'm fishing, I'm not holding the pole with one hand. I've got my other hand on top of that hand. And that just adds a little bit of weight and it enables me just to lift rather than just strike. It gives me a lot more control. And just having the weight of both hands, had three little indications already. Pellet's still on. I'm fishing. Four. Five. And just having that six on the sixth one that one came off we're going to change that bait not bad though we've caught a lot of fish and we first one that we've lost well we've had a fantastic day and we've caught so many fish on the bottom just feeding nice and accurate really short and the fish have kept coming but what happens is, a lot of time on these commercials that are packed full of fish, like Middle Lake, here at Gold Valley, is the fish come shallow, and that's exactly what's happened. And they're slightly bigger stamp, as you can see. Beautiful size F1s. Only had a couple of small carp, but I've changed it around a little bit. I'm starting to loose feed some four mils fishing a four mil on the hook and basically I've just followed the same sort of procedure I would do in a match and that is I've just kept, kept catching fish everything nice and close I really feel like today we've had a constant supply of fish just coming in because I've left everything else untouched and then around about half hour ago started kept feeding the pellets in the pot and there was a swirl and another swirl and basically what's happened the fish have just come shallow another one there now and it just goes to show on these fish packed venues places like Tunnel Barn and Westwoods you can catch them not only on the bottom really close to you but obviously shallow it's always worth just having that rig ready but also, and again, this one's fighting well. Like I've already said, leaving the rest of my peg untouched, I could always put a section on and just follow them out if I wanted to. But I think with those pellets that have accumulated on the bottom, there's a lot of fish. We've got a nice bit of shade just to our left. And it was just apparent that 
the fish will come up off bottom. The day's warmed up as well as it's got later. And yeah, it just goes to show that it's not just about fishing on the bottom when you're catching short. It can be about catching them shallow. Just a little word on the rig. Again, a nice size float. Different venues have different rules as far as line length, overshotting floats or anything like that. So always be mindful just to check with the fishery. And it's a real good example of letting the fish tell you. I, don't, I never really want to go to a venue and think, right, I want to catch shallow. Another one there now. I want to catch shallow. Let's just start blasting pellets in or maggots or casters. A real good way of fishing these commercials is starting short and just letting the fish tell you exactly where and what they want to be caught on. Just using a banded four mil. Again, different rules. Here at Gold Valley, you're not allowed super glued pellets or varnish pellets or any of that. I'm just going out, just turn my rig over a couple of times and I'm just loose feeding four mils exactly where we were fishing on the bottom. If I needed to, I could probably go back on the bottom. But there's a lot of fish swirling. Don't be afraid if you do get in this position as well, just to edge out a section a little bit further. But there's plenty of fish here, there's another fish there now. White Hydro doing the business again on the shallow rigs. I like a slightly heavier elastic. We fish blue all day on the bottom. But if you're going to be catching shallow, it's because there's a few fish about and normally you can accumulate a weight. So just a little bit of a stronger elastic, like a white hydro, for me, just lends itself to being able to catch them that little bit quicker. And on a multitude of venues, and Gold Valley's no different, normally when you're catching them shallow, they're just that slightly bit bigger. So again, that little bit of a heavier elastic can sometimes be a real plus. Beautiful fish. And again, we've been feeding with that pot all day. And another advantage of fishing short, if you can catch them shallow and short, is the regularity you can feed at. You unhook a fish, you can feed. You hook a fish, you can feed. You can do everything. Because you're doing it close to yourself, you can do everything very, very fast indeed and accurate, which is obviously a massive, massive part of my fishing. You can see since we've unhooked that fish, I've fed two or three times. Nice and accurate on the money. I can go out, turn my rig over, make a little bit of noise, and we've got another one on there. And that's just down to regular feeding and accurate feeding. Don't be afraid on all these commercials. Big carp are a little bit different, but don't be afraid on all these commercials of fishing real close to yourself. Make it easy for yourself. See your float better, you can be more accurate. Everything about it, like I said earlier, is just a plus. So again, because I'm fishing close, I can just throw some pellets, unhook the fish in the net, and all the time with loose feeding and trying to catch them shallow and short, it's about that regularity of feed. Earlier it was with the pot, we kept the regularity really, really good and we caught a lot of fish and we were catching one a chuck. And now I can just feed all the time until I get back out there. And now I'm just setting myself up with those two or three feeds, turn that rig over, Keep feeding nice and accurate. There's another one there now. If I was fishing at 12 meters, it's very, very hard for me to keep that regularity up and I'm teeing myself up. Already I'm thinking I want to keep that feed going in because I want to tee myself up to get that next bite really quick. It's speed of bite. 
that's when you end up with a lot of fish and a big weight. It's not, you know, how quick you are now, although you want to be as fast and efficient as you can, it's speed of bite. You see, I can unhook a fish, throw some pellets in already. I'm teeing my peg up for when I get back out there. Like I say, I've got a banded pellet on. And all the time when you're fishing short, see, I've fed again there now. And you watch what happens now, especially when I've said it's about speed of bite to catch these weights. Turn my rig over a couple of times, right where I've been throwing those pellets. There'll be fish waiting there. Because again, we've not let the regularity fall at all. Little swell there then. And there's another fish. Really is brilliant. One thing as well, we've kept it short and we've fished in front of ourselves. Unless I have to, I'm not going to start feeding other lines. But if you do catch fish in the edge, again, don't be afraid to fish shallow in the edge down here. Off bottom, half depth especially if you've got a nice bit of cover, which we've got today. Hooks just come out in the net. But all the time, it's difficult when you're fishing long, especially when you're fishing shallow. It's very difficult to be feeding like now with a catapult, but when you're fishing at this sort of range, it's very, very easy. And like I say, if you can catch them like this, either in close against cover down the edge or in front of you you can really accumulate a big weight fast and i keep going back to it but the best thing about fishing like this is you've got a, everything's untouched you've got that constant supply of fish out there with no pressure on see i've fed that a couple of times gonna go in And there's another one on now. And that's all down to regularity of feed and accuracy of feed. Hand in hand, start with a little pot, whatever your chosen bait is, keep it nice and tight. Imagine in that bait box on the bottom, you want to plumb up, feed and fish in that. Vitally important. To the end of the section, far bank marker, and always, always be looking for little little telltale signs that it's changed. Today, there was a couple of swirls, I foul looked to fish at half depth, and I had another one where I flicked the rig out, was potting the bait, and then the elastic was out. Don't need to be told twice. And it, again, it was a shallow rig that came out, and you can see now, we were catching really fast on the bottom, but if you can catch them shallow, you're not gonna compete really any other way. There we go, there's another one shallow. It's been absolutely unbelievable. We've caught loads of fish today. And I really hope that you incorporate this into your fishing because you can really see the advantages of fishing close to yourself. Everything about it is an absolute plus. And I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Wheels Way, please like and subscribe to the Match Fishing YouTube channel. And like I say, take note of everything I've shown you today. He's going a bit mad. Everything I've shown you today, from the accuracy to the regular feeding to making it happen to the strong and durable gear that you need. And I'm sure if you incorporate this into your fishing, you're going to catch a lot more fish.